interested in when you when you decided that you wanted to do guitar making because you're quite young yeah. and you've been building for quite some time now. So when did you decide? Well, it was uh, I would say more than twenty years ago. Yeah. Uh, I was doing things with my hands uh, since a long time, furniture and uh, different things, um, um, like uh, little planes and these kind of things, and uh, and playing the guitar on the side. So so it was a combination of uh, all those uh, passions. Yeah. So you do play? I do play a little bit now. I do more play the double bass that you can see in the back. Yeah. Um, but a tiny bit of uh, guitar, yeah. So my, my guitar is number 36 back yeah. in, in 2009. So what, what number are you up to now? So I'm making number 83, uh, which is th that means that I'm, I'm a slow maker. <laughs> uh, I'm making around uh, six, seven uh, guitars per year. Six or seven? Yeah. yeah. Do you think that there's a... Dominic Field... Um, Daniel Friedrich, there's a French tradition going back to Boucher. Yeah. And you, do you feel that you're a part of that? And you. Um, yes, of course. I mean, I've uh, when I when I uh, quit the school, I I went to see Dominique uh, with instruments I did uh, in England, and uh, apparently he was enthusiastic about uh, my work, and he did help me a lot. So of course I did learn at that time. Um, all the story about uh, the the French makers and uh, and the Boucher because uh, they were close and uh, and uh, um, so we came on having a, a friend uh, friendly uh, relationship now and uh, yeah we keep on discussing about things and uh, <coughs> with Daniel as well I mean uh, I've uh, met him a few times and. Uh, he teached me some things and uh, I've been through a, a lot of his instruments. Uh, I did a big uh, restoration recently of uh, one of his guitar, which means I had to change the whole uh, top of the guitar itself, which was a really uh, uh, big, uh, big work to do and uh, interesting as well. Uh, so of course, I, I mean, I, I, I'm keen on this kind of uh, of work of uh, being simple without being uh, uh, simplistic. Can you say that in English? I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Um, so the aesthetic is uh, is uh, of, of the 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 instrument itself is is really important, and um, yeah, all those as aspects are. Um, uh, what we are calling the French school of, of uh, guitar making, something that's uh, simple and um, and uh, and very elaborate in the same time. Yeah. Daniel Friedrich's got such a reputation as a maker. Can you see what it is that he had? Such um, I don't know. He was uh, he was basically uh, really uh, passionate with uh, what he was doing, and that's that's the main thing. Um, I mean, you put a, a lot of energy on. Uh, uh, finding um, your well, uh, uh, developing your model of uh, of guitars and uh, and um, he was a very talented man. I mean, uh, he could do things, uh, amazing things with uh, his hands, and uh, he could make uh, a lot of guitars as well. I mean, yeah, he was just uh, basically a talented uh, person and. Uh, and he did put all his uh, skills uh, in what he was doing, basically guitar making. Yeah. My, my guitar's got a very uniform uh, sound, uh, evenness across all the strings. Yeah. How how is this achieved? Well, that's a good question. I, I don't. If you have the clue, let me know. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, f yeah. Well, it's a difficult question to answer because um, there are so many aspects. I mean, the flexibility of the wood and. The, the thing is that the fact of being one person uh, controlling the whole process of the making uh, makes a big difference, I think. Uh, which means that, like for instance, uh, the pieces of wood that we're using are, are really different one from another. So, so we can, um, we can with our sensibility, uh, work every piece of wood in a different way. Um, and uh, for the evenness, for instance, uh, 
I believe that the asymmetry uh, in the system itself uh, is a good thing. Um, so, so I'm trying to achieve that in the in the stretching system that I'm that I'm using now. But uh, yes, it's all a matter of uh, compromise, compromise, and uh, you have to have a, a top that's flexible, but not too much, and uh, you have to have a stretching system that can control the. Uh, uh, the tension of the strings and um, and that can uh, also liberate uh, the, the 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 top itself. So so it's uh, it's really uh, a complicated uh, question to answer. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as an example of the process of uh, guitar making, for instance, I will show you um, the process of uh, slicing the wood, which is something I like to do. Uh, especially with uh, a plank like that that's uh, gave to me by a friend of mine who's a retired guitar maker and um, so I'm using a bandsaw for uh, doing some slices of this uh, thick piece of wood and uh, uh, it's going to be the back of the guitars and the sides so it's rosewood and so this is a slice that I'm making and it's going to be assembled, glued together like that um, and then the shape of the guitar is going to be cut out of this uh, for doing something like that basically yeah so um, so uh, this is the spruce I will be using for, for the guitars it comes from Switzerland and um, well I'm selecting this wood because it's a fairly uh, light uh, spruce and uh, again, f as for the backs, um, it's it's uh, like a book matched uh, piece of wood that's going to be glued together for for making the whole width of uh, of the front itself. So I'm buying it in this way. And I will show you. So as you can see, it's going to be glued like that. So can you tell at this stage? What makes a good, what will be a good piece of wood? Um, so it's the general aspect of the piece of wood that you have to, to, uh, to look at. But uh, the main thing for me is the density of the wood. So it's something that I'm trying to, um, uh, to, to measure uh, before I buy the piece of wood. Uh, you can test a little bit of flexibility as well, like that. And um, so it's just a... Um, uh, very approximate appreciation of the of the flexibility, basically, because you just use your hands for doing it. But, uh... Uh, so I've been working already. It's it's like a, let's say it's one layer of varnish that's uh, building up with. Uh, um, uh, with many uh, appliance. I mean, I'm working for, let's say, three weeks just for applying the varnish. Of course, I'm not, I'm not doing a... This is not the only thing I'm doing uh, during those three weeks, but uh, yeah, it takes uh, around uh, 40 hours, basically, for, for doing the whole process. And the resin itself comes from um, a bug that uh, is uh, uh, eating a special tree that grows in India, Pakistan, and uh, and it's it's uh, forming a cocoon with uh, with this um, resin that it's uh, eating, and uh, and this is then dissolved in alcohol, and that's uh, that's what I have here basically. This is called a rubber. And it's basically just a, a piece of wool, um, which is the reservoir of uh, of uh, the varnish and the, and the alcohol I'm putting in, and uh, it's just covered by a cloth of uh, linen and cotton. You can tell us it's become very popular. What what would what? How long would I have to wait to buy one now? Uh, well, uh, uh, it's around uh, eight years now, yeah. Tell us about the design of the head and how you got that idea. Um, well, so uh, I've been doing 
hundreds of drawings uh, to, to try to find a personal uh, design for the shape, um, which is a very difficult thing to do. And uh, and uh, I just uh, I'm just inspired by uh, what I have around me. And um, and uh, in a courtyard uh, close to the workshop, there is a a door that has this exact uh, shape. It's just a bit of an anamorphosis of uh, of the same shape, but uh, it basically comes from that. I mean. The idea itself comes from this uh, this door, and uh, well, maybe we can go and have a look at it if you want to.